you doing? This is Mr. Johnson, and I'm talking to you about the Southern Colonies, the Big South. This is a little relaxed atmosphere, so I figured I'd just kind of talk to you on, you know, not like the classroom type setting and whatnot, but I will talk to you and kind of review, and hopefully you can use this and listen to it as many times as you need to, and watch it as many times as you need to, to get the basic information for the class as far as the topic. Hopefully I can do more of these for you in the future. Anyway, I do want to tell you that you will have some questions that you can't complete for credit, so hopefully this will help you out as as much as possible. <clears throat> so, let's keep moving. First, I want to show you a map of the colonies. You have the New England colonies here. You have the middle colonies here, and then you have the southern colonies. Southern colonies are pretty simple. You got Maryland, you got Virginia, you got North Carolina, you got South Carolina, and you got Georgia. All right. So I just want to show you that map so you'll know the area we're talking about, and these are the 13 colonies, but we're going to keep going. First, Jamestown, if you remember we talked about Jamestown, Jamestown was almost at the point of extinction, extinction, excuse me, and they pretty much knew that, you know, their chances of survival, if you were a colonist, your chances of survival was slim and none. You probably had a 20% chance of surviving throughout the winter in the new colonies, in this new world that everybody had tried to settle a couple of different points throughout the uh, British history and American history. But you had, a, if you remember, you had an individual named John Rolfe who brought a crop called tobacco from the West Indies and introduced it to the Jamestown colony. And they found that this plant would actually grow a lot to this crop. And you remember we talked about cash crops. Cash crop is any crop that you grow strictly for money. So at that time, you know, you would try to grow as much as that crop as possible so you could sell it. And tobacco was in high demand over in Europe. And King Charles did not hated smoking, but he thought that the revenue from it was was really good. So, you know, that's why they kept it legal in uh, parts of Europe. <clears throat> now, for the wealthy landowners, they set up Williams Williamsburg. That's where they that's where the rich people live. It was kind of like, you know, the elite lived in that area. Now. Then you had other colonies that profited off of it as well, but you had one religious colony, and it was a Maryland colony, and it was settled by a, a man named John Calford. John Calford's nickname was Lord Baltimore, if you know Baltimore, Maryland. Anyway, but the reason why he settled this and did not receive any kind of persecution because, remember, at this time, you had Puritans, you had Separatists, and you had other Protestants that came over to the New World, and they were under umbrellas pilgrims. Now, now you have a Catholic individual that's coming over and settling in Maryland, and the Catholics could actually serve without being persecuted. And the reason why is because Lord Baltimore was a good friend of King Charles. So this is where the Catholics can actually come over and worship freely. And it was a safe haven for any Catholics that happened to trickle in throughout the community of the 13 colonies. And uh, Maryland was, this is where it is today, it was the northeastern part of, of Virginia. Northeast of Virginia. Anyway. So then, King Charles gives land to eight Lord Proprietors from Britain. And the land became called Carolus, which is Latin for Charles and actually dubbed the name Carolina. That's how the Carolinas got its name. And the first city of the Carolinas was Charleston. Now the Carolinas, you know, you think of North Carolina, South Carolina, and a lot of people don't know this, but Carolinas actually was one area and they split. And the reason why they split is because they had religious problems between the Anglicans and the Quakers. And the proprietors decided to just split the Carolinas in North and South Carolina and let the Quakers live in one part and let the Anglicans live in another part and let them be fine and let them live in peace. They figured that was the best thing to do. So that's why North Carolina and South Carolina is actually split today. Now, then at the bottom, if you notice where I showed you, uh, 
you have Georgia. Now, James Oglethorpe settled Georgia. He was the first leader of Georgia, actually. Uh, they established a, a city or, or town, and it was called Savannah. Now, Georgia was not a very coveted place, and the reason why is because it was pretty much settled by prisoners, number one. And you wanted to get those prisoners, number one, out of Britain, and you wanted to get them to you didn't want them filtering in through the colonies. So they pushed these people way south at the brink of humanity is basically what they thought. Because to the south, you had Spanish Florida, which was owned by Spanish and the English. Spanish didn't care too much for each other. So you had, um, you had a lot of attacks from the Native Americans and the Spanish. But that's why they put Georgia down because if these natives and the Spanish, if they went in and attacked, you know, parts of Georgia and, and, and tried to fight, you know, nobody really cared, basically, if the prisoners had been taken over or, or taken prisoner or anything like that. So Georgia was not a coveted place, was not very high on the radar of anyone. Now, when we talked about the region of North Carolina, we talked about the coastal plains, and that's where a lot of t your tobacco plantations were from. Plantations, simple. It's a large farm which crops are grown for sale, your cash crops. Now the reason why is for a couple of different reasons. Number one, it's a lot of fertile soil. Number two, it's flat. You can mass produce these crops because at this point, you know, in 1751, there was the Industrial Revolution in England. And they needed as much raw materials as they could possibly get from the colonies. So therefore, you had a bunch of farmers in the colonies. And they put a strain on these colonies, actually, because they demanded more from them. And they demanded more raw material. And the one way you could get this, this cash crops harvested without actually working yourself to death is to own more slaves. So that the Industrial Revolution in England actually affected the colonies and the southern colonies in, uh, with the idea of slavery it kind of heightened slavery in the English colonies at this time but you had two things that, that the southern colonies actually exported is tobacco and cotton and uh, Georgia develops very slowly like I said again because of the cost of the tax on the natives and the Spanish in Florida so those are and, and one reason why Oglethorpe did establish the uh, Savannah was because of that. Now, what I want to do, I just want to let you know. I want to, I want, I want to let you know that uh, this is my end of this Southern Colonies presentation. I'd like to thank Mr. Snug for actually helping out. And, and providing the contents of this this PowerPoint presentation I voiced over and I hope that the, you can watch these I hope they can help you I will have some review questions you can submit to me for credit if you have any questions you can always come by the class you can always you know, uh, contact me in some kind of way you can find me at school and I hope that it works out for you and I would love to hear your feedback. I think, I, if I'm not mistaken, I opened up I opened up feedback on these little screencasts, so you can give me some feedback. Anything I need to do better? Uh, that's probably about the best I can do right now. I can try to make it a little bit more visual. But anyway, just want to thank you for everything, and I will talk to you in the next go around. Don't forget to answer your questions.